Hey guys, it's Angel. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we continue our tutorial series with common mistakes people make trying to land. We're going to focus on light aircraft in this one because, surprisingly enough, it's actually easier to make a mistake on approach in a light aircraft than it is an airliner. Sounds strange, but it's true. In this, we're going to cover a couple of the various mistakes people most commonly make because with the power super readily on demand, it's very easy to come in slow or fast and make a mistake there, especially when it comes to the flare as well. So we'll be looking at these components in a landing approach situation, what it looks like when you're making a mistake, how to correctly make an approach, and we'll also take a look at some crosswind conditions. Okay, so we're here in a Cessna 172 and we're on approach to Friday Harbour. Now we are high and we are fast, which is exactly the situation I want us to be in here. So we're gonna roll round down towards a heading, pretend we're doing a circuit, pretend we're doing any old thing you wanted this to be. Now, I want to clarify something whilst we're on approach here, because I don't need to pay too much attention to make a mistake here. When I said at GA aircraft it's easier to make a mistake than in an airliner, airliners, you're not flying a circuit. You're not flying typically. You're not flying uh, with an engine that responds instantly. You're generally setting up onto a very stabilised approach a distance out, and you're flying the aircraft in. Nice and simple, right? really easy to understand you're going to be flying in again there are always nuances the aircraft is more complicated i agree however in general you're flying ga aircraft typically with a lot less automation you're flying with a lot less systems now my trim wheel for some reason is dramatically exaggerated but we're on approach here so we are high and we are fast we're coming up past 100 knots right now i'm gonna keep the throttle up a little bit here shut up don't sink no, no quiet yes it, it sees me as going too fast to be descending like this which is kind of where i wanted to be so we're, we're too fast even for flaps this is a example of mistakes were made as the computer's telling me do, 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 fly down to the runway really really fast now i'm aiming for the numbers you know where you plan to touch down in fact, it was almost the right kind of angle of approach, but as we arrive here... Oh, okay, I've missed. I've missed. I've missed. And I'm still missing. I'm still missing. I'm still missing. Why is this? I have no flaps, even. Why am I still floating? Why am I still floating? I've got flaps deployed. No flaps, even. Completely clean aircraft. Now I touch down. And we're almost at the end of the runway. <laughs> Why is this? Well, take a look at the aeroplane. The wing structure here, as airflow comes over the wing, it creates pressure differential, which creates lift. Bernoulli principle, we talked about it in the last episode. Now, the faster you're going, the more lift you have. You know these little things on the backs of our wings? Flaps. What these do is they change the shape of the wing increasing that pressure differential without needing to have a higher amount of airflow to give the same amount of lift. So essentially you get the same amount of lift as if you were flying faster whilst flying slower. What does that give us? A more stabilized, easier approach at lower speeds? Yes. But it also means that because we are getting that lift from that structure, it's more draggy. So the aircraft wants to slow down more. So the closer we are to our landing speed and our stall speed the easier it's going to be for the aircraft to actually lose that last bit of lift and touch down normally now you see how far we landed we 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 approached for the numbers right we missed completely we missed completely in fact the end of the runway is here this is atrocious you see what damage coming in too fast does because we had so much lift from being fast that the aircraft didn't want to land Landing is not a process of flying the aircraft onto the runway and stopping. You are not using your brakes to land the aircraft. You're not forcing it onto the runway. In a correct landing, the aircraft will want to land. So let's go on and look at too slow. Okay, so we're on approach to Friday Harbour yet again. And this time, I'm going to turn that off manually. So we're losing airspeed now from our cruise altitude, or airspeed, I should say. And this is going to be a demonstration of too slow. One of the common misnomers a lot of flight simmers make is when they land, they think they need to use full flaps. All the time. They're landing flaps, right? It's the setting that says landing. Right? That means you're meant to use it, right? 
It's for landing. That's the setting you set for landing. Shut up, autopilot. I swear to God, you are the most annoying thing in the universe. This is why I don't fly the G1000 model, but this is the one that's available in the base version of the sim, so it makes the most principles here. Okay. Shut up. Don't sink. All right, we're losing lots of speed here, so I'm going to put some flaps down. Let's apply full glorious flaps. Let's put some power on. And this should shut up in a second and stop whining at me. It's almost like those emergency things can't be turned off for a reason. So I'm going to maintain our speed here at about 50 knots is our ballpark. Way too slow, realistically. But we're above our stall speed for full flaps. Shut up, don't sink. This is annoying. So as I'm maintaining our speed here, you'll notice how much I balloon when I do that. Watch this. Full throttle. Whoa, big balloon. That's because right now our wings have a lot of surface area from the full flaps and it allows us to really gain lift very quickly with a small change in airspeed. Now, here I am. Oh God, too slow. So with full flaps, you will find yourself on the knife edge of the stall repeatedly and it becomes an awkward balancing act of keeping the nose low enough to be able to actually see the runway and keeping the airspeed up to the point where you can make your approach. So this being too slow, you'll see how easily the aircraft goes. Oh, look how close we are to the stall point. That is right on the edge of it. And we are literally holding the aircraft aloft with power, which is a dangerous situation to find yourself in when you're not getting enough lift from the wings where you're having to basically throttle up to actually get power. And um, it's wobbling, it's not quite holding its attitude properly. If you have to put a sudden input in like a crosswind and you have to give it a little bit of rudder, you could very easily stall the aircraft and roll it. We're at 39 knots right now. That is danger zone territory. We're on the knife edge here of stalling. And I'm just crawling in towards the threshold here. Oh, too much, too little, too little, too little. Power, 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 stall horn. See what I mean? This is sketchy as hell. And we're down. So what went wrong here is you are holding the aircraft aloft with power, which means you are too low on the airspeed with full flaps. These barn doors deployed out the back of the aircraft are dramatic and too huge. They are in many cases a commitment to land, full flaps and a light, small engine GA aircraft. It is a commitment to landing. You really haven't got enough power to overcompensate that amount of drag. So realistically, it puts you in a situation where you're going in no matter what. Now, this really applies to the 172s, the 152s, the lower powered aircraft, but the fact is when you are sitting there on the edge of the stall region, trying to keep the nose down to see the runway, trying to actually keep the aircraft in the right position, it's touch down that you have got too much flaps. There is no need to always use full flaps for landing or landing setting for landing. It depends on your approach speed, your altitude, your air temperatures, numerous factors. In this instance, full flaps, it put us in a difficult situation where the aircraft was really on the knife edge of stalling. And if I'd let the power drift off even slightly, the aircraft could have stalled a wing, rolled in and crashed, which would have left us in a very difficult situation. So we'll take a look at what would be considered the right way to make a landing approach. So once again, we're a little bit high on our approach, which is fine. I'm just arbitrarily giving it a altitude setting in the... Uh, custom start point here so I'm just going to conduct a couple of S-turns this will help me extend the distance to the airport and to safely reduce my airspeed and altitude now I'm at idle throttle here just letting the aircraft drift down and try not to gain too much speed in fact I'm going to I'm too close so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a full 360 here which means I'm going to apply a little bit of power and just allow the aircraft to just bleed some altitude as I descend on this approach to the runway. Now, you can do this in an approach. If you are in the incorrect orientation, be that altitude, airspeed, or any other factor, you can do S-turns. You can do a 360. There is nothing wrong with this. This is a fairly standard procedure. You'll obviously call it over the radio. Where you are, what you're doing. So people are aware of that. Now, this has lost me some altitude, which is fantastic. So I'm going to put some power in here. 
Look at that. Much, much better altitude wise. We're in a great position. So I'm slow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out some flaps. Now, before we get to the final approach, I'm going to talk about two things. This area here is called the Limburg Reference. There's a long history behind that. Wikipedia is your friend. But essentially, this is where I'm going to be looking when I'm on final, very short final, as I'm about to flare the aircraft. Why? Because it shows me just how close I am to the ground. It's a fixed reference point where I can judge my angle to the ground and my distance. So as I'm approaching here, I'm going to keep it about 65, 70, probably speed up a little bit to 70 knots. Now, there are papi lights on the side of the runway. As you get closer, you'll see there's four lights. Hopefully, there's going to be two red and two white. That means I'm on the correct, technically correct, approach path. Don't get fixated with these. They're a very good reference, but they always are not necessarily correct. More white, too high. More red, too low. Now, ideal world, yes, you should be two and two. Perfect. So we're at 500 feet now. We're going a little bit slow, so I'm going to put some power on here. And I have no flap. I have one notch of flaps deployed. I already did that. So cockpit flows are important, by the way. 65 knots. We'll maintain this for our short final. Now, you'll notice I'm going to be aiming just past the numbers, not at the numbers. Because this should actually allow me to just land much more carefully. I actually sped up there, which is not what I intended. I'm only going to deploy one knot of flaps because there's no wind, it's calm conditions, the aircraft isn't particularly heavy, and it's not a very challenging approach. So I don't need more flaps. It's also a pretty decent length of runway. So 60 knots, just going to maintain this on short final here. It says we're actually too low, but this runway jumps up. There's actually an elevation change before it, so I'm happy with my attitude here. So I'm idle. And I'm going to look down at that reference point now. As I come closer here. And I'm going to now flare the aircraft. Don't be afraid of the stall horn. It's not your enemy. Bit of a long flare there, but the aircraft touches down very gently and very smoothly, exactly where I wanted to put it little bit right of center line sure but i was more judging the flare in that instance than perfect setup and trying to talk to you at the same time hey i'm not perfect what can i say but that reference point allowed me to judge exactly when to start lifting back on the stick i was pretty slow so when i did i got a stall warning is that something to be afraid of no the stall warning can come on between five to ten knots of your stall speed mostly five knots now it just means be aware and in that position when i was flaring the stall horn isn't a problem because I'm intending to. Now, what we're going to cover in the last part of this is a couple of more advanced techniques and then we'll look at a crosswind landing. Okay? Okay, so welcome back to what we're going to call the final leg of this. Now, we're very high and we are well out of position. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is called a side slip. Now, we're too high up, right? That's a problem. How do I get down without gaining airspeed? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rudder to the left so the nose swings left and I'm going to roll the controls to the right. Now this is a glider trick. You keep the nose relatively elevated to not lose speed and you're looking at this side of the aircraft. And as you'll notice I'm trying to maintain that 70 knots but you'll notice how much airspeed I'm uh, out English I promise how much altitude I'm dropping here. Really really useful. Helps you lose altitude without gaining airspeed in various conditions where you may need to go down but not go faster it's a glider trick it's how they can get themselves into the airport every time without an engine you know because going around kind of sucks okay let's ignore that we're too low down now so what we're going to cover next is as i get power on here because i'm going to go do a 360 to set up for my approach here shut up but don't sink man because i'm clearly not sinking now we're going to make an approach here into Friday Harbour in a crosswind. Now for this we're going to cover a crab. Crabbing is where you're turning the nose of the aircraft into the wind to counteract the effect of the wind direction. Now we have a 15 knot wind from the west, meaning we're going to have almost a direct crosswind over runway 34 here at Friday Harbour. What does this allow us to do? This allows me to demonstrate to you how it's not that hard to land in a crosswind. It takes a bit of planning and expecting what you're going to find, which is why you'll get your meters and other information on the airport before you get there. Definitely before you get there. That way you can plan for this. 
I know, I'm going to come into runway 34 with a crosswind. 15 knots across the runway. That's brisk, but it's something I can understand. I know to expect it. Now, it will dictate how much flaps I use. Too much flap, and you'll turn yourself into a sail. 15 knots, we can deploy a notch of flaps, not a problem. So power off here. Runway is in sight. I'm just inside my flap window there, so let's get a notch of flaps in. Now I'm going to have to nose into the wind here, so I'm going to actually exacerbate that by putting it further to pull myself straight with the direction I need to go. Now you are going to have to look across the glare shield of the aircraft here a little bit as you're on approach. It becomes a little bit more of a experience game and a practice game to do this, but once you are lined up correctly, you're keeping the nose off somewhat here, and I'm going to have to kill power here to make sure this works. This is where you completely ignore the pappies. Make sure you keep an eye on the ground terrain and uh, make sure you have a safe approach angle. And I'm making sure you're doing this correctly. This is where you need to come in a little bit faster than normal because stalling when crabbing will basically kill you. You're in a really bad situation because of that. The aircraft is not flying symmetrically. There's different angle of attack over both wings, which means one wing will definitely stall first rather than both together. So rather than a nose dip, you'll drop a wing and the aircraft will roll in. So I'm keeping the aircraft crabbed here. I'm going to apply more speed because I'm actually pretty slow right now. I don't care where I touch down as long as it is correct and positive. So as I'm coming down here, short final, kill power, drop the nose central again. There we go. Roll my ailerons in the correct direction here. And I'm going to pull my flaps up. A little bit brisk there on the runway, but it did what we needed to do to make sure we came in correctly. This can be a variable exercise. There is no one-size-fits-all result to crabbing an aircraft. But what we're trying to do is trying to keep the aircraft behaving correctly. You judge for the wind direction and you put the nose into it. As you saw there, the wind was blowing from the left. Which is weird because the wind sock said something completely opposite. But as you noticed, our nose went into that direction and we flew straight. Right? So as we were pointing away from the runway, we were actually flying straight towards it. It's a very odd concept to wrap your head around sometimes, but the aircraft will do what you ask it to do. And it's not just flying straight. Aircraft can fly in many different directions, as we saw there. And it's a matter of balancing out how you understand your aircraft, what it will do, what power and various other control factors will do to it. Last thing we'll cover in the video is a soft, well, short field landing. Okay, so we're back at Friday Harbour for our last approach. Now, this is going to be a short field one, so I'm going to be giving this everything here. Now, my goal here is to stop as quickly as possible. How do I do this? I'm controlling the amount of lift the aircraft actually has. I'll be doing that by utilising its desire to stall. And also using quite a lot of flaps. And I will be using my brakes. And I'll also be using the flap lever after I touch down. Because your flaps generate more lift at slower speed. How do you reduce the lift? You lift the flaps up. So once my wheels are on the ground, you'll notice we pull the flaps up almost immediately. That allows the aircraft to be to have lower lift. Meaning there's more weight on the wheels. And more weight on the wheels means more friction stopping faster. So if you have a really short runway, when you touch down, pull the flaps straight up. It actually reduces the lift, increases the weight of the aircraft on the ground, will stop quicker. Your brakes will be far more effective that way. Okay, so I'm ignoring Mr. Don't Sink here because I'm not going to be completely remotely sensible with this. Okay, so we're good here. So I'm aiming right for the very threshold of the runway. We're going to see just how short we can take it with this thing. And I'm ignoring Mr. Don't Sink because I know where I'm going. I know what the aircraft wants to do and what it doesn't want to do. And I'm well aware that I'm looking towards terrain. This is actually a pretty difficult airport for this because it sees this right here. It sees terrain and it sees me sinking even though I'm on approach. Okay, power down. Slightly off center, so I'm just going to slip it a little bit to the side, and slide slips can allow you to do that too. 
straightens me out. I'm going to go full flaps for this because I do want to take advantage of low speed and make this as a crawling approach as I can. So I'm going to be motoring this in, riding the throttle a little bit. You'll notice I'm actually back and forth a little bit, which I shouldn't be. That's a bad habit of mine. We're right on the edge of the stall marker here. So I need to hold this as true as possible. My aim point right now is actually before the runway. My eyes are looking at the dirt in front of the runway to give myself a proper reference for this approach. I know there's a step up on the runway threshold, so we have to be aware of that. Here we go. And flare. Flaps are up. We touch down just about a meter before the runway, but it's flat dirt, so we're okay. How long did we stop? Well, we're on the number still. <laughs> yeah. Slow speed plus correct aim point can do a lot for you. This is why I said you're never aiming at the point you want to touch down. You're aiming either ahead of it or before it. Before it's a very good one for short field because that way you're going to flare at that point pretty aggressively. And when you flare aggressively, you're going to float a little bit, which picks the aircraft up out of its descent and will curry you forwards a little bit. So without flaring, we'd have probably touched down about here. We touched down about there in the end. In fact, let's go into our trusty flying mode here. So without our flare, our aim point or my aim point for this flight was about here. Not great. That's onto the slope. Where we actually touched down was about here, where the mouse is. It's flat, it's dirt, it's not ideal. There's probably a lip there in reality, but it wouldn't have been great for my gear. But at the same time, in flight simulator terms, it's flat. It's no real difference. That would have been perfect. I'm a human being. Not exactly a short field and takeoff and landing aircraft, the 172. It's not bad for it, but it's definitely not designed for it. Hopefully, the tips in this video give you a good idea of how to improve your landings. Now, will these apply to every situation? No. But they apply to most, which means with Friday Harbour and the G1000-172, which is a stock aircraft and stock airport being available, you can try this out yourself. Set up a custom start point in the air to the south, make some approaches to runway 34, and see how the aircraft feels to you. A lot of flying is feeling especially VFR. So get some feeling, practice, and you'll get used to it. This is why I hope to make this series something that people can approach. I'm not going to go into insane detail. I'm not going to teach you every single step of the way with graphs and graphics. I'm going to talk about feeling a lot because feeling is important. And for the vast majority of you, you don't want to fly a real plane. But hopefully, these tips can help improve things for you and make your experience more enjoyable. Thank you for watching. Bye.